Okay, here's the tool I had to get. Been needing these anyway. Just went through these holes and pulled out. You don't want to pull more than 90 degrees or you'll end up just scratching, scratching the back of the panel like this. You want to pull on the hole, so keep it, you want to keep it past 90 degrees about this way and then roll it around as you pull and then just slowly pull the hole out. Now down here, since the other panel, the inside of the panel is so close to the hole, I couldn't get down this direction. It'll only go in from here and then I rotate it, it'll only go about right there. I can't turn it all the way around. So what I did on that hole is I just pulled it like this and rotated it around and that pushed this part of it in further. Then I was able to go around all the way around the hole on these bottom ones. Now the two, two at the top here, I was able to do all the way around. So now I've got them just slightly under flush and I'm gonna hit them with the welder at a downward angle so I can just build the hole up or build up the filler material from the bottom to the top instead of trying to fill it this way because it'll just fall through. I really can't get anything back behind it. I can probably get to uh, maybe this one to put something behind it as a backer, but I know I can't get to the rest of them. So we'll just build it up from the bottom, bottom of the hole up with the uh, trunk lid down in this position. That'll be next. Once I get it welded up, I'll just grind those areas and then fill over with uh, fiberglass body filler and then skim over all that with either regular filler or with glaze, depending on how close I get the, the body work to begin with. Okay, set up to weld now. I've got a plastic uh, Bondo spreader under here to keep this from scratching the backside of the trunk lid. So I'm grounded here, battery's disconnected. I went through and ran a drill bit through these holes just to make sure that I knocked off any remaining paint or e-coat that's on the inside edge of that hole. So the weld won't have an issue starting or adhering to that. So I'm gonna start over here just for no other reason than just to go from left to right. And uh, I'll start on this one, see how it goes, and then adjust if I have to on the rest of those. Okay, I've got that one done. What I do is I start on the bottom, and I just back go back and forth on it. Okay, I'll go back and forth. I was just checking to make sure nothing was burning in there. I got a little smoke coming off, but that's probably the cavity wax that was in there to begin with. I'll keep an eye on that. But I'll start at the bottom and just go back and forth tacking it so that I don't burn through. I can see it sunk in a little, but that's okay. I can pull it out with a stud if I had to, but nothing I can do about it at this point. Just gotta get it welded. Same process on the other ones. We'll be back when I'm done. Okay, all done. That took about two or three minutes. Try to keep the weld as flat as you can, just so that you don't have to grind very much and reheat the metal. I'm gonna grind these down with the uh, belt file. That way I can get down in the pit. And uh, I'll get some filler on it after I come back and re-abrade all this to make sure I get any kind of flash rust off. I've got a little flash rust like right in here. You can see that just from it sitting out. But I plan to uh, sand this entire area once I'm done. That way I can just put the filler over nice clean, clean freshly sanded metal. And then once it, that gets uh, completely blocked out, then I'll run back over the bare metal with uh, probably 180 at that point and then just get this in epoxy. Okay, I've sanded this area. There's no reason to go through and sand the rest of it just yet. I'm gonna sand it right before I prime it. There was actually a uh, slight bow right in here. Inward, I had to knock this out a little. I found that the other day. But you can see these down here, at the bottom are still fairly flat. The ones at the top out here, kind of in the open area, they sunk just a little, which is actually not a bad thing because 
I need to cover the weld up. No way I didn't have to grind a lot of the weld out. I got it most of the way out, but if I go too thin, I'll take out what I put in there. So I'll just fill over these with fiberglass filler. If I push this out, I could risk cracking the weld since it's a lot harder than the other metal. So I'll leave it like, like it is. I'm gonna mix up some filler now and get it over all these spots. And I can block that out flat and go back with regular filler on top of it. I'm using Everglass on this one. This It says short strand, but this stuff's actually milled and you can't even see the strands. It's basically just got fiberglass in it. So this type you don't want to use to fill a hole. You want to use long strand for that. Right, I'm going to press it in really hard to begin with and then go over the top. Got to work quick. It's about 100 degrees out here. Still might have to go ahead and do another mix in a second. I'm going to go back and wipe under there with some wax and grease remover to get any off that edge that I might have gotten there. Thinner might take the paint off underneath. Okay, I've got this finished out. This is in 180. Now right in here, you see this transition. That's still just a little bit low, I believe. I don't know that it would even show, but I can sort of feel it. So I'm going to glaze that area there just real thin. This over here, I blocked out the, uh, the filler that I put over the fiberglass with 80 and got it close. You can see I've got guide code on it. So now I'm coming back with a piece of 180 on a block and taking those scratches out. Then I know I've got them all out. And at that point, if it's nice and smooth, no low spots, then I'll be able to prime over that. But this, I may need a little glaze right in here. I just need to decide, probably prime it out, but I may go ahead and glaze it. We get this side done. If it needs glaze, and I'll I'll have the glaze out anyway, and I'll just put some over there for sure. Okay, I'm down to this area here. I've got glaze on some spots down in here, and I found a couple small uh, dents that I didn't see before in the ends. There, one here and one right right in here. So I'll let all that harden and block it later. But right now, I'm going over this area where the spoiler was. I sandblasted this, but I don't want to go through it. I've still got some pits, and I want to make sure I get all that rust out of those pits. When I sandblasted it, it looked like it was gone, but then I sanded over it with the DA, and it's still still pitted. But uh, this is 5717 metal conditioner. This is uh, one part to two parts water, and that will remove all the rust. you got to keep it wet and scrub it, and then after I wash it off with water, I'll come back with uh, the 5718 and I think this basically neutralizes the uh, the acid that's in the other one. And that will get it ready to paint and uh, go to prime. And then I'll come back and sand all this with a block. Okay, trunk lid is ready to prime. All the holes for the spoiler and the emblems and this bottom trim are all back masked. So none of this primer gets inside the jam. I've got it back taped. I went around to all the bare metal that I had exposed earlier or for a couple weeks and uh, re-sanded all that. This has all been blocked back here so it's nice and freshly sanded. You get some epoxy put on it now and I'll wait about 45 minutes or an hour and get the high build put on it.
make sure I get all those edges really well that I went to bare metal on. I'll be back with the uh, high build urethane just a little bit. All right, since there's no body work on the top of the trunk, except for right there around that where I treated that rust, I'm only gonna put two wet coats on the top and I'll put a third along the back where the body work is. All right, I've got the quarter panels. I'm gonna separate this bottom section for the floor at the factory seam here at the quarter panel. But since I need to weld from the inside, I'll be welding from the inside of the car down, down along there in the quarter panel. I'm gonna drill it from the inside. Some of these I can drill from out here. I can get a drill bit, but right in here, this vent, it, vent pocket's in the way. I can't get my drill in here. So I'll drill those from the inside. That'll give me plug weld holes in this piece. And I can separate it here with a, uh, with a putty knife. And that'll leave holes in the quarter panel so that if this panel here needed to ever be used, it would already have holes in it. And I won't do any further damage like trying to cut it out with this. I'll end up with a square hole and the metal will be really thin around around that hole so this will allow this to be used if necessary later on. I think I do need about an inch of this piece and probably some of this on each, on each side of the car but we'll see after I get this off. But I just want to get this separated so that I've got these small pieces to work with and not this whole assembly. So I'm going to drill from out here what I can get to and then go from inside for the rest of them and just get this off and I'll do this to the same thing to the other quarter panel and I'll put the rear body panel in the car first get it all welded in and then weld this into the quarters and then I'll come back in here and add what I need to on the ends to match up to the uh, rear body panel okay I've got uh, I took an eighth inch bit and started these where I can get to them I still got to go from the inside on these right here, I can't get to them because of this. I'm gonna go ahead and just drill through. Uh, well, I'm gonna start with a 5 16 bit, eight millimeter, and try to go through where I've just started with a divot here. If that won't work, if it wants to walk, I'll just go ahead and drill through with the eighth inch and then go through probably with a step bit uh, through that hole, but I'll see what works best. Get these done, and then I'll just repeat the process on the inside to get those off. Okay, they're both off. <clears throat> I drilled out through the quarter panel, so now I've got plug weld holes to go through. I just washed this one off, it was covered in dust from storage. I've got one hole here I need to straighten. That right there, the other two are still straight. And there'll be grommets that need to go through those holes, so those need to be flat. And there's one dent on this edge here that needs to be flattened back out. And this flange down here looks pretty good. I may need to straighten this in here, but that would be clamped to the frame rail, so that would flatten itself out with the clamps. That's about it on this. There is some surface rust, just because not, the e-coat doesn't get completely between the two at the joints. And these vents will have to be seam sealed once they're uh, ready to paint. I'll just seam seal around those. Just around the outside perimeter. This one's pretty much damage free. It's the new one. Came straight from the dealership. I think it came from Germany, actually. Took a couple weeks. But you can see how this is flat. The other one's got the dent right in here. So I can flatten that out. No problem. 
So it's basically ready to go in since I'm going to end up panel bonding this down here. There's not enough of the frame extension down here really to weld to it. Maybe on this side, but the other side I think was too thin. I'm probably just going to panel bond it. That way it'll seam seal it for me at the same time. And all the squeeze out I can just wipe through here. And if I need to put any more seam sealer, I can put that on when I get ready to do the outside. And when I do the, the inner panel, I can do all the seam sealer at once. Okay, I'm ready to put this side piece in once I get this part of it out, of the old one. I gotta pull the drain out, and this piece welds into the wheel well across the back of it behind this drain, and then down here and over to the frame. And I'll just have to cut spot welds across the top here. And then once I get the rear body panel in, I'll know where to set this piece so that I can butt it up right against the rear body panel right in here. That'll locate this flange right here on this four pan piece. So once I get this cut out, I'll make sure the new piece fits in there really well. But I won't get it welded until I put the rear body panel up here, get it clamped in position to locate this and I'll clamp this right here to the rear body panel. Then I'll put a few tacks in just to hold it. Then I'll pull the body panel back off out of my way just so I have a lot more room to get in here, give me better access. Get that completely welded in. I'll bond it to the frame rail since there's not a lot of material left down there. Let's see how that's just rotted away. I'm going to clean the rest of that surface rust up with uh, a uh, strip disc or grinder and then I'll just panel bond all of that so that I can cover that. If I weld through this, it's just going to go right through it. There's already some holes. So that'll keep me from burning the, the paint off the back side here which I'll have to coat anyway, just to make sure there's no rust, but I'll, I'll put 415 back in here. But I'll most likely panel bond this, and I'll seam seal all around here, and all inside. This will be the simplest way to get all this out. Just drop the whole piece in. Okay, I went through with the belt file and just got all the welds kind of cut through on the top side here. I gotta save the bottom material on the quarter panel so I can weld the new one to it since I've already got the plug weld holes drilled through from the new one. I'll weld through the trunk through this onto the quarter. Anyway I'm just chiseling this off right now with a putty knife. It's coming right off. I went ahead and cut the bulk of this out right there on the floor with a uh, aerosol. We gotta transfer that vent over to the new piece later on so I gotta save that. Same thing over here, I'm just gonna cut through these welds and then just chisel, chisel this piece off all the way into here. It actually overlaps this piece right here. There's like a little, a little brace inside here. I'll probably end up cutting through this weld. I may just trim this part of the piece off since it's rusted underneath here. And that way I can clean that up. When I come back uh, to put this piece in, I can just tack weld uh, this piece if I cut this 90 out right here, I can just tack weld it to the piece I'm replacing. And then get in here and treat all the little bit of rust there, clean it up, get the scale off, and put some 415 on it. I'm going to do the rest of this. But I'm going to go through and cut these welds off and just try to get this flange out of here. And that whole piece will be out. Then I'll need, just need to come down here, do what I need to do there, where the overlap is. And then I'll do the same thing on this side. Got the same... Same kind of uh, repair there. All right. I think I showed you this one out already maybe, but uh, same thing over here. Just got this one out. And it's layered in between this little gusset piece here between the frame rail and the wheel well. It's actually between that and the inner, the inner wheel well. So it's, it's up in between these two pieces. So this has to be lifted up to get it out. I drilled it from the back side so I can weld. When I get it back in there, I can weld all this together through right here. There was no welds in this piece, so that just needs to be pushed back down over it and then seam sealed. There's one right here on the frame where the floor goes in between the frame and the wheel well here. So it's sandwiched in between. So I took all this off so I could see where the welds were. And this is going to get burned off anyway, so I went ahead and took the the uh, seam sealer off this back side because I'll burn it from here. I just got this section of, of the uh, quarter out. I hammered around on it to see how thin it was as it rotted from the inside. You can see where it was holding a bunch of dirt and water. 
So I'm gonna have to clean this area up. I went high enough to where I knew I'd get past any of the rust that had formed on this, so I can clean it off. So what I'll have to do is uh, cut a piece out of the, the new donor, or new quarter panel that I got, and lay it up here, and then I'll just trace around the new piece and cut a little more of this out to match the new piece. Instead of trying to shave the new piece down, I can just set it up here like this. Overlap it just a little. I'll cut the other one a little bit bigger. And then I can trace along this and just cut this out and I should have a, a nice tight fit. There was some rust uh, along this edge. I'll be able to sandblast all this. And uh, I'll blast the wheel well here. I'll blast the quarter. And then weld this piece in and seam seal all this. Okay, I just test fitted the tail panel one more time. When you have the tail panel in, you can't get the floor pans in, so those have to be put in first. So what I'll do is I'll get those in place on either side. I'll weld along the front where it can't move, and probably along the bottom of the frame. That way that, that piece will be in position. And this side, since it's got so much damage already, see all this filler, I'm gonna cut it right here where it was split to begin with. I'm gonna cut right down here and get rid of this whole entire section. And over here, I'm just gonna cut, there's a lot of rot behind here, so I'm gonna go just past this step to where I minimize the length of the weld. So I'm gonna cut this two inches or so off here. And uh, put the tail panel in where it needs to be so that the trunk, I've got it latching right through the center here. I put some tape on to see where it was hitting it. So that's coming right down on the tail panel. Get that welded into the back. Then graft in some new pieces on these corners and that will let me know where to set. And with the tail light installed, that'll let me know where to set the quarter panel since it moves in and out now. So this back here won't get welded until the very end. Once I've got these pieces replaced from the outside, I'll pull this in, butt it to the, the uh, tail panel right here. Then I can weld all that once it's in its final position. I'm just trying to make sure I don't put something in out of order because if I do, then I'm, in, I'm gonna be in a bind. I'm gonna go ahead and get the uh, panels marked. I've got tail panel marked here. I've already punched the holes at the bottom, but I gotta go through here and drill these. Now the last shop that did this, they just welded along the top, but I'm gonna go through the center like it was done before. I just need to drill these holes that I can't get my punch to. And then uh, same thing on the floor panels. I need to get the, the holes marked, some of those marked. I just need to go through and punch these. Still need to mark over here. And there's about three or four welds right there. And then some along the bottom. I just need to punch holes in these. And they'll be ready to go in. So I'm gonna cut through right here. Get rid of this whole section. Slide it straight into the car and I'll trim the 
I'll trim the patch panel down just so I get a nice slip fit up to the tail panel. All right, I got the tail panel in temporarily so I can make sure all of this is gonna fit. I'm just doing one side at a time. That side over there I'll do next. I just didn't put it in yet. Like I said, this has to go in first. What I'll have to do is I'll weld it along the front up there in the wheel well. And then down here, I'll weld it uh, from inside the, inside the car. Out here, this is the uh, tail panel. I'll weld it through that hole to the frame rail that's bare metal there. But I'll have to, I'll have to weld down in there in the corner, uh, right down there. I have to weld this piece to the uh, frame rail on the top. The tail panel comes down and goes around all of it, so that'll lock the piece in in the front and in the back corner. And I'll probably put a weld down in the front corner right in here on the frame rail just to keep it in plane. So it can't rock around those those two points in the, in the front there and back here. That'll hold it in position. This will have to be welded after the uh, tail panel is, is welded in and everything so that I can put the quarter where it needs to sit once I get a tail light in it. I'll run these welds along here and then I'll put this patch panel in the back once everything's finished. And then weld to the patch panel right in here from this side these two holes and I'll weld down the front here and this is gonna have to be hammered out a little bit it's got some filler in it so I gotta grind all this filler off until I get rid of all of that once I get that patch panel in there everything will be done um, same thing on this side patch panel will go in last right now I've just got it in here now to mark it So I've, I just marked all these holes, took it back out and punched these out. And under here, see, under that little flap, it'll get welded, that flap will get welded to the, uh, to the piece I'm replacing. So I'm just gonna grind the bare metal underneath it. I don't need to uh, punch a hole in that because I'll weld through that piece right there onto the, the new piece. And then I'll have some burn through into the wheel well back here. And I'll just take everything that burns off. I'm just going to come through here and chisel it off. I did the other side before. Uh, it's already done, so I may just come through here and, and grind or chisel this off beforehand that way. But I don't have to worry about it getting too hot and burning. But I'm going to get this back out and I need to grind the finish off uh, the back side of all this. So once this is in here, I can't get to the back side of this flange anymore, even though I'm not going to weld it yet. Also, I need to do back here so when I put the patch panel on it, I can get, get to that and uh, grind around all these holes back in here on each side so I don't have any e-code in the weld. Okay, this is the final fitment. Got everything where it will sit. Trunk lid's coming down, striking right in the middle. Now, there will be a seal here, so I'm planning on that coming up just a little bit. Everything's prepped and ready to weld in. I've just got to get more clamps on it. I just clamped in the front just enough to make sure I held it tight where it can't move. So a lot of this I'll have to weld. I'll start in the front here because I can't weld the quarter panel to it yet until I get the tail panel in it and have a tail light in there. So the tail light will locate the quarter panel once I bolt the tail light in. Just center it in all these holes that'll locate this panel for me. Then I can weld a couple back here and it won't move and I can take the tail light out of the way. Do the rest of them. Same thing over here. You know, if I'm do these patch panels at the very end, I'll just trim the patch panel down until it slips right in there and weld it in. Same thing here. So I'm gonna pull this tail panel back off. Go ahead and get a few welds done on either side so these pieces will be in for good and probably do a couple down here on the bottom just so it can't drop out of here and move. And then once I get those completely welded in to the wheel well in the frame, I can put this back in, get the quarter panels located and then, then do the sides and I'll do all the back of it at once. Okay, the tail panel is ready to go in. Got all the welds prepped front and back. 
I take pretty much all the heat coat off the flanges. Since I'm gonna come back and flood all these overlaps with uh, either epoxy or 415, I like to take all the e coat out of the way. That way I don't have any issues with the weld. The weld's the most important thing. You don't want it falling off the car. So I can come back and coat everything after the fact, but I want to make sure the welds are right. I'm going to use Pour 15 on this one just because some of these are starting to surface rust in here since I've had to let it sit for a few days. I'll come back and get all the rust off on the outside and then I'll coat everything with Pour 15 and let it run through the flanges. And that way, when I'm finished, I don't have to worry about all the surface rust that might be in between the flanges. The Pour 15 will seal it off. Normally, if I just do one of these panels on a collision job, I've got enough time to weld it in and then immediately coat it where it won't get any rust at all. And epoxy is okay in that, in that case. I went ahead and I sandblasted all of this before, and there were some spots that were starting to surface rust. So I went back and just brushed that with a strip wheel again. And all this is bare. So I'll put, it, put the panel in and weld it in from inside here to those flanges, just like it was welded to begin with. So I'm gonna get it put back in there and in position and clamp it in. And at least get a few tacks along the bottom, that way it won't move. And then I'll just skip around at the bottom here to finish it up so I don't get any one spot too hot. All right, I've got it partially uh, clamped in here. Forgot to mention, I've got it down on the weight of the suspension so that I don't have anything flexed when I go to weld this in. It's going to be where the car is going to ride. And for those pieces in there, I went ahead and welded the front under here from inside the trunk to hold this piece in for me. Then I dropped it down on the weight of the car to weld it along the frame rail um, inside there underneath. So that was with the car on the floor, which is a little less convenient, but you can't have the car hanging off the stand here when you weld anything uh, to the structure. So I'm going to leave it here until I get everything kind of locked in position. Then I can pick the car back up and finish all the welding. But we can't have it moving. So I'm going to put some more clamps in a few other places just to keep it secure. But then I'll have to change where I've got all these and just kind of reach around through here to get all of these and draw the, draw the tail panel into the, the brace behind it. So I can get rid of that gap between these two panels. I'll just squeeze it together. And I can also hammer down the center of this hole a little bit to make it match up. Once I get all this welded back in the back, I'll set these gaps up here where I want it to be and I'll weld the top. That way this gap will be set. But right now I've got it, I've got it taped to where I can see where the latch is striking. And it's right in the center. So I fit all this before I took the tail panel off. So this right here is where it needs to be, the trunk lid. So once I get this in, I can then take the trunk lid off to paint the to paint it and put it right back where it where it was. I'm gonna get the welder out and get some tacks down at the bottom here. Um, there's some plug welds done down at the bottom. And I'll do a few at the top and I'll come back up here uh, at the very end on each side. Okay, I've got the entire bottom done and all the welds inside. Down in here, everything I can do until I put these corner pieces on for the patches. I've got the tail light temporarily put in. I went ahead and tacked this seam right here. The original seam actually comes over to right here. So what I'm gonna have to do is probably either add a little piece right here to connect these two or either fill this with seam sealer. I may just make a little piece to go in right here, but right here is okay to just weld it to it. So I went ahead and just locked it in place there. Got the tail light fit. So I used that to locate where the quarter would need to be in relation to the tail panel, welded it in. And now I'm gonna to go to the other side, do the same thing. And I'll have to decide what to do uh, over here. Probably the same thing. There's really not a lot of space here to have to take up. I can probably seal that. But I'll have to put the light in there to lock the quarter in place and then I'll I'll start uh, right here. That'll hold it for me just like this side. And then once we get all this done up at the top, I can start making patches 
And once I get a patch to fit in here, I'll clamp it to this and then get the quarter panel even over here and that'll locate the outer quarter for me to weld all along in there. That'll be last. Then we can get all this coated and seam sealed.